Turn that on. Should be live, just getting everything set up here. Beauty, got some black gloves today, ran out of purple ones. Still got some left in me box, but um, I had to buy a new box and they don't have the purple ones anymore. So welcome to me live video. I did one earlier this morning, um, had a bit of an interruption in that, but this one should be all set up, ready to go. Now I'm continuing on to that other one. I'm gonna add some bushes and shrubs and show you how to do that. So I need to just bring up the page so I can see who comes into the room, who I can say hello to, who I can acknowledge and things like that. There we go there. So let me just open that. Look, it took a mass sort of cracker. And I'm just going to put the, what do you call it? The links in the description below. That way people can click on the appropriate link paste there we go save that because there's about 10 links there and um, always scroll down under the video and just see what links are available there I've got merchandise there as well which is um, always good to have a browse and buy yourself something there uh, where are we in my videos so and um, if it's your first time here give me the thumbs up share it to your social platform somewhere there and it, it helps people like me out when you watch some youtubers there here we go have we got the sound i hope we got the sound muted yes we have okay maria i've got a maria in there now i'm just going to put this to my bigger screen there just so i can see beautiful all right so i'm going to add some shrubs to a painting i'm going to show you how to paint some simple shrubs for a beginner and I did a painting earlier today, here it is here, and it's pretty much a good background to putting some shrubs on there. And because there's some water there, we can put some reflection in the water. So we wanna grab a bit of a green, forest green. We wanna grab a bit of a black. Actually, I'm going to use um, black gesso. That's a flat black. So I'll get the paints out first that we need. I want a yellow green. I do have a yellow green somewhere floating around, floating around. Where are ya? Here we go, yellow green. I want a bit of brown, bit of brown, bit of um, burnt umber. Here we go, a bit of burnt umber. And this is giving you an idea what colour paints I'm going to use here. And if you're watching the replay, the colours I'm using will be listed below as well. Who we got there? We've got Dustin. G'day, Dustin. Dustin, uh, Kez, Maria, uh, and Memi. This is not a normal time I'll come on, so I'll probably get some different viewers this time of the day. See how we go. Uh, green, green, yellow, mid-yellow, mid-yellow. Where's me mid-yellow? There's the yellow green as well. Cadmium yellow light, not mid-yellow. Cadmium yellow light. I usually like that to um, create the dead undergrowth uh, colours in the greens there. I can't see the paint. Oh, I'm going to bring you over in a minute. I'm just setting things up. So when I get you over here, everything will be here. All right. So bear with me a minute. All right. Now I want um, a brush as well. I'm just getting some brushes out that I might be able to use. Uh, there's another, this one here, green. Green is nice. All right, come over here. And we'll get going. Hang on, I just pulled me wire out. There we go. What do we got down here? We're on the palette here. So first I'll show you the painting. Okay, this is what I did this morning. So we're gonna add some kind of island with shrubs and trees on there. We'll give it a bit of a, um, a reflection and we'll give it some foreground as well, okay? G'day Mark from UK, how are you? And Shaz, g'day Shaz, how you going? Shazzy. Welcome to me video. Now we'll start with um, good old forest green, something simple. All right, I've got a spray bottle of water. Let's just wet the palette a little bit. 
and I've just wet my brush that I'm going to use, which is a flat filbert cat tongue, like a filbert type. And I want to use forest green, okay? And we're going to use this to map in the bushes slash shrubs, whatever you want them to be. Okay. So I'll get it in here a bit wet. I'm going to get a bit more water there. It's quite a warm day here today in Perth, Western Australia. G'day, Nancy. How you going? And Zubiba. I'm not sure how you pronounce that name, but I'm pretty sure you've given me the thumbs up. Good on you. Indigo, how are you? Good morning, London, UK. Your painting videos have helped me so much. You are my online teacher. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us. You're welcome. That's why I do this. I know that people like you are so appreciative and you just get something out of it. Okay, which way should we go? We'll go, uh, let's say, I'll zoom out a bit just so I can get my bearings. There we go. <clears throat> I'm going to start from about, geez, look at that brush. It's an expensive brush and it's already gone deculated. I'm going to start from about a bit past halfway. Okay. And I want to start coming up into the sky. Now, I don't want that paint too watery, otherwise you'll see right through it and you'll be telling yourself, my painting looks like crap. Now, I'm using this flat filbert cat tongue type of brush you know why because it gets air in you just look at that get some air up there in some of your canopy there load your brush up just remember when you're painting there's no rush to get things done so i'm going to bring this up to the roughly about there that'll probably be the height i go with it all right now we'll get the top manufactured the way we want Get some lots of air in between that canopy. And like, like I said, this this filbert is like upside down smiley faces, and you can get nice treetops within there like that. So at the moment I'm getting that done first. And all the rest can be blocked in later. Pretty much like that. There we go. Now I can grab this. Come to the waters line there. And when you brush it in, try not to brush a big heavy line there. Dab to it. Okay, dab to it. This is a live painting, so I can't really stop and edit it. I've got to paint in real time here. Um, with this COVID carrying on here and there, um, you're probably going to find I'm doing a lot of lives more than I normally do. Live paintings, that is. Okay, so we've got all that mapped in, and now I'm just blocked, not mapped in, blocked in. We'll call it blocking it in. Okay, beautiful. Now we'll do the bottom half. That wasn't too hard, was it? See, it looks a bit, what do you reckon at the moment? But now we'll get the bottom done. So we just, I'm gonna scratch it into the height. I've got to block it in for the reflection, right? Just like so. Try not to get any goobly gloops on your brush. Somewhere there like that. That's pretty much the depth I want to go. Beautiful. Now I'll pick up the paint. And I'll block the bottom half in to that reflection. You want it broken up at the bottom here. See how it's breaking up? You don't want a solid line there. You want to scramble that together. Just so you got some kind of um, real reflection type going on in there. There we go. Pull it. This is just all pulling down strokes here. <clears throat> a 
get it all there. Just pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. That way you'll get that movement in the bottom half. And this is gonna hopefully turn out like really sharp reflections, mirror ref type reflections in your water here. So if you've got a, a background you've already done with water on it, paint this on top of there. This is just a continuation of a demo I did earlier, how to paint realistic clouds and I'm making use of the canvas, okay? Now I'm not worried if that dries, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna dry it anyway so the next piece will not stick to it. I'm trying to get ready to turn the camera off but I, I keep forgetting I'm live. How's that, is that to the edge there? There you go, you can see that. Now I'm just washing that brush and I've got to give that a bit of a dry because while I dry it, it helps with the um, putting the next colour on. It helps you so it doesn't mud up. So give it a bit of a dry. There we go, that'll do it. What have we got there? We've got some... Some I, I won't be able to still use techniques in all my paintings, says Hoswina Pathouse. Hello, Hoswina, long time no see. Hoswina Pathouse. Pathouse, Pathouse, Hoswina. Yeah, so now we're going to grab our down here. Get some, I've got some black gesso, it's pretty much, everyone knows what black gesso is. Now, I'll just load this same brush up again, and we want to put the depth on top of that green, periodically here and there. <clears throat> so, I've loaded my brush up, come over here. Now, see the waterline? You want to roughly come within the middle of that, Okay, this will dry nice and flat, this black gesso, that's why I'm using it. And periodically come up here and there, not too much, but enough. Work it out, the same, mirror the same movements in the water there. But do them on a pull down motion like that. Okay, keep following that middle horizon line on the water. This is good for um, over the water reflections, these type of trees and shrubs. Now we'll do the bottom half here, not too much. And move along to this section here. All the way across the middle, because that's the depth within the trees. I'm leaving some green and I'm doing pockets of black. Look at that. And it all slightly joins to that bottom there. Down there like that. There we go. Okay, I can wash that brush. Now I'm going to do a bit of mixing here. I'm going to mix a bit of paint up. And it's important you have this colour that I'm going to mix, okay? So let's move that there. Come down here. And you want your burnt umber. Okay, so we'll get our burnt umber. And I don't need that much in, my goodness. Cad yellow light. Not cad yellow medium or cad yellow. You want it light because it's a different pigment. And it's so good for tinting and mixing. I might put some over there as well. I don't know why I whispered. I'll use a different brush to just mix it. Now what this is going to do is we're going to get the undergrowth dead wood stick colour going. So let's get this going. Because if you look at a tree on the side of the road, all that green, squint your eyes and you'll just see this actual colour within it. And this is what makes it look a bit more on the realistic side. A beginner can start developing their journey. Now that's done. I want to grab just another brush to mix. And I'm going to get some of this green here. And the cad yellow light. And I'm going to make my own yellow green. All right. There we go. Now get some water on my brush, just so that's going to mix a bit better than what it is doing. There we go. Good, very good. 
I pretty much use a flat brush to get that going. Now, let's grab some of this dead undergrowth colour. Get your brush, work out how much water to put in your brush. Not too much, because some people complain their paint cracks. They might have a weak quality paint and they've put too much water with it. When it dries, it cracks like the bottom of a creek bed when it dries out of water. Okay. Now we want to slightly get some undergrowth within this green here. Here and there, periodically. Up the tops, follow that shape you're looking for. Nice, fine. The finer and sharper you can get these, the better it will look. Now I'm going to bring some of that over the black there. Boom. If you see any uniform patterns happening, destroy them by all means. You don't want any patterns developing in your work. We'll just concentrate on the top, then we can pull down the bottom colours later. Now I'm trying to go for a more realistic type here instead of it looking just green and whatever. I'm going to get some white on my board as well. You can see how that's developing. I'm just grabbing a little bit of white. Come down here. Right, and now I'm going to just put some in my contaminated brush because this is going to turn the lights on in that a bit. It's just a little bit on the dark side. You'll see it still. Okay, and continue. Just here and there, here and there, here and there. Yeah, you can see that now. Here and there. Bit down there. Now, you might have your favourite brush, there's so many people that have their so many favourite brushes to do these sort of things. By all means use your favourite. <clears throat> there we go, look at that. Getting there, it's not done yet. Now we're going to grab just the darker half again of that and just lightly come over here and start getting some of this pulled down roughly where it is from the top, okay? Just a little, little hit and pull. Turn your brush around if you have to. Just like that. Get a bit more. And just pulling it down creates the illusion that it's a reflection underwater. Almost done. Getting there. That's a bit bright there, isn't it? Eh? Doesn't matter. Now I'm going to wash that brush because I'm using that same brush for my foliage. Now that yellow green that I mix, a bit of luck, this is going to bring the painting or that part of the shrubs home. Okay. Yes, Oswina, I don't usually go on live this time of the day, but I'm at home. What's happening in the world gives us something to do. So I've got a bit of extra time. I'm just going to dry that a bit, just so I can get some paint sticking on top of that. Good morning, oh, says Sandy. G'day, Sandy. Yes, we got Silky. Is it Silky? Different language, I can't read it. Sorry about that. Right, picking up the yellow green with some yellow in it. Now, is our camera there? Yes, let's 
zoom in just a little bit there. Now, our light's probably up in the sky still. Get this. Leaving a lot of that brown that you've put on there and the black. Let me look in the monitor there. Not bad, I want a little bit of yellow, so I'm just pulling a bit more yellow as I go. No, I need a bit more yellow. There we go. Yeah. So you're kind of covering the tops of that brown, but leaving the brown where you see it, and leaving the underneath as well you can see how that's looking quite okay looks a bit more real than just a big blobby stamp bush you know what i mean dance some of it just in front of the shadows there i'll get a bit more yellow into that over here see you notice i'm doing the top half first get rid of that stampy look look at that because then I can concentrate on the bottom a bit later. Remember, there's no rush in your painting. I'm trying to get some of the yellowy bits and just have the light hitting some of this here. See, it make, making it like that. And you'll notice that brown in there that's given it quite a more realistic look. Now we'll grab that colour again, what's on our brush, and just carefully find them here and there and pull it down. Okay, and once we've done this, I'll pick up a bit of the yellow to make it more vivid and brighter just to show where those bits are within the reflection as well. See, it's just pulling down. This gives you a more detailed reflection, I feel, in your waters when you're doing them. Instead of trying to pull down on the whole lot with another brush to scrape it through your wet paint, this way is a bit more take your time and get it done looking nice. Now I want to grab a bit of the yellow. So here we will get a bit of the yellow, more yellow, just there, because if you look at the top half of our reflections there, you got some bits that are a little bit brighter, so this is just to attack those and add that real, just a little bit here and there. That'll do it. Don't go too much. You don't want to destroy everything that you've put in there, but it looks like bushes in the water. Now, we've got to fix this up, okay? Let's show you how easy we can do that. We're going to grab, I'll zoom back out. Here we go, it's looking like a bush. Good stuff. I'll zoom back out. We want some green. Now, I want this brush here. It's a thick liner brush. We want this colour here, the one that went more lighter green, but not so much yellow within it. I'll wet the brush again a bit more. I want this reasonably flowy, just so we can have a grass bank on the edge of that island there. Now I'm gonna grab my bullshit stick just to steady my hand. Where are we? I'll grab you up here. Okay. And within that middle section, you want to start all the way out here. Let this go. Twist it. It can be skinny and fat here and there. What it is, 
It's a layer of bank layering out there with some lawn on it. Get some really wide there coming this way. Twist it. There we go. And we'll just finish that off. We need a, a little brighter bit within it. See, I'm going to use a little bit of white. Just grabbing some white and putting with that. A bit more white. Not too much white. Just something to put on the top of that lawn. Pretty sure that'll do it. Oh golly. <laughs> there there we go now mainly on the top of that line that you just put there let's start from about here now if it's looking too white like I feel that is I'll disturb it in there a bit more because I just want a, a lighter green value I'm not trying to get a white line on there so I'll try and disturb that Twisting it, manoeuvring it. If you want, I don't really like, I'm not a fan of doing it, but if you want, you can scratch in some uh, trunks, tree trunks within that bush there. But I'm not going to worry about that. I'll get this all the way out there. Now this stick is helping me add bullshit to my painting nice and steady. Look at that. Let me look in the monitor. That's the value I'm looking for. Yes, we've got like lawn out on the edge of that bank there. Now we need to give that a dry so as um, we're not going to have any drama. Hey, g'day Barry. Yeah, I've got a lot of time up my sleeve and I've, well, why not? A lot of people are all over the world are going live and giving people some of their time. So why not, I say? Um, the camera's not going to stay there, so don't whinge and carry on and complain that the camera's not in a good spot. I'll just get it there. Now we're going to just finish this water off, okay? Um, let's grab some glaze. Glazing liquid. This is glazing liquid. That's just the brand. But so long as you can find a glazing liquid, and this one is a gloss, low velocity, viso low viscosity, viscosity. <laughs> you know what I mean. Now come down to the palette here, just so as I can show you how we get the water going. Uh, we need some white. Can you see there? Yep. And I know that that blue, the blue that you use for the water, grab that, which is a cerulean blue. Okay. Now I want to just wash this brush so as I can mix that paint up. Oh man, and I need to wash that paint really good because I don't want any brown in there. There we go. Okay, where are we? So let's get a bit of blue and a bit of white and get that value. Just a very tainted white. I'll move it around until I see an area. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this bit here. Okay, happy with that. See, there's still brown in there. Yet. Now watch how much I use in the, in the um, glaze there. I'm picking this brush up. What I'm going to do, that brush has still got brown in it. I don't want to destroy my painting, so I'll start again with another flat brush. Okay, now I've got enough in this brush. This is how much you need. You don't need much at all. It's like if you ever separate from the partner, from your partner in life, you don't get much in return. It's the same sort of thing. <laughs> now see there, there's enough for all that glaze there 
All right, plenty, 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 because when that glaze dries, you'll see that tinge of blue over it. You don't want it too dark because it can kill a lot of our beautiful reflections we made. This bit here, you can see it's tinting up. I'm gradually bringing some more of that pile into it as I do it. Take your time doing these methods. Pretend you're a mad scientist and you're creating your own painting. Now that brush was just to mix it. You need a decent, like this one here, something like half an inch. Nice and soft, get it in the brush. And this is, you don't want to muck with this too much on the painting, okay? Because it could start ripping. Mainly over the, um, the water there, over the reflection. So I'll, I'll sort of come here with the corner and I'll bring the brush down, down. Not pressing too heavy, boom. I'll turn the brush around get a bit of water surfacing happening there, out here, a bit more. There we go, it's plenty. Plenty, that'll dry clear, but it'll give you that vision of um, a film of water on top of that reflection. Now we'll just put a, a simple foreground here. Uh, great, this side just having a nice cold beer. <laughs> oh, you talk amongst yourselves, that's great. Good stuff. What have we got there? We've got a few people, 30 people. Okay, now you can keep going to the cows come home with that water. And what I mean by that is by grabbing yourself a small brush. Um, where's my, here it is here. A small brush and you, you can grab bits of white and put shimmer over that water like the light is hitting it. I'm not gonna do that. I'm a bit pushed for time here. Uh, we're going to grab my putter on a brush. How long have I been going for? 30 minutes. And we'll grab the, um, we need a bit more. Black gesso. Get some water on there. So she'll move off my brush. Okay. Come about here. There we go. You know what? I need more black gesso. It doesn't have to be a sharp straight line that can have jagged bits on it for the sake of um, grass foliage or whatever okay but if anything you'll notice I've come in the painting from the edge not coming up you always come down it's just better looking if you ever got a cloud running off your painting you've ever got a mountain or anything try and get it running off the painting on an upward position this black gesso dries very quick as well. That's why I'm using it in this live feed. I don't want a sharp edge there. So what I'm going to do is just get some scratchy batches in it. There we go. Just about there. This is pretty well close up. Come on. That's not too bad. I'm going to put some um, stuff here. All right, and maybe a bit over here. Come on. There you go. All right, let's get rid of all the bump, lumps and bumps out of there. Now we'll give that a bit of a dry.
Okay, that's pretty much dry and that's not too bad. Now let's give ourselves a dirt, we're just gonna do a simple dirt trail and some green foliage sort of growing into it. So a decent simple color for that would be down here where we got, we'll just use, let's say a yellow oxide. So we'll grab some yellow oxide and a brush. I'll probably use a flat brush for this and probably just simple white. So I'm going to use that brush I use for the um, mixing the glaze. Now glaze can be used for quite a lot of things, but I just simply use it for like sinking my water down. Uh, where are we? White. Here we go. We've got some white here. So we want to, well first what we'll do, we'll get the track in first and then we know where we're going to highlight it here and there. Yeah, it's a bit wet there, I better get it dry here. Otherwise I'll stuff it. Okay, so just rest your hand, get the edge of your track. Oh, it's still wet, see, not to worry. What I'm gonna do is come off there and down, that's it. Now let's grab our yellow oxide, or yellow ochre. This is actually yellow ochre. Leave some black in it, especially these edges, you want them nice and sort of torn out to the edge there, sort of torn and feathered. And you want to come a bit wider now as you come closer to where you're standing. And you can sort of bring it to the left or bring it to the right. And the darkness that you leave in there is creating the depth. Come really wide here. Where's the bottom of my painting? Oh, there it is there. This is just on a canvas, sheet of canvas itself, canvas cloth. It's not on a panel board or anything like that. So we've got our actual track, our path or whatever, mapped in there. Now we don't have to dry that with the hair dryer because we wouldn't mind some of this scrumbling and blending with the lighter colour. So just simply down here, you can use any colour for this. I'm using the yellow oxide and the white. It's just what I feel, okay? Now I'm going to do something quite simple and effective to this footpath, okay? So we've got some of the lighter colour here. You can see the two different values. <sighs> Mainly on the very tip of that path, because that's going downwards to the water. There we go. Boom. Okay, let's get into it. Leave some of the other colour there, a bit more. And you've got the bits of dark, you've got the bits of the dark yellow ochre and you've got this just highlighting it. Because we're going to just put, I just want to show you how to put a few simple stones on it. Okay. So we'll pick up a smaller flat, here we go. Grab this colour on a flat, okay. Just grab it. Load the end of it up. And probably mainly where we're at the front of it, just probably about here, just put around and give it a trail like that. Another one next to it, you know, there's probably a group of them here. Just like that. Maybe another one out here. So it's like a letter D laying on its side there, on its back. Like that. Maybe something here. Just like a letter D laying on its back. Just a couple of stones here. 
just wherever you want them. I'm going to put just a few there. Okay. Pick up that brighter colour with a little bit more white now, just a little bit more white, add a bit more white to that, okay? And those stones that you just put in, just work out where the tops are. Just something simple and different with having the painting. And you just want to highlight them. See, it's a different highlight to what the actual path is. That's why I went a bit brighter. Let me look there. Now I'm going to grab a bit of the, um, I've just grabbed some burnt umber. <sighs> Sorry, there we go again. Some burnt umber with that yellow oxide, just to get the bottoms there, shadow them in. Just something to have on the bottom of your path. A bit of darkness to set them back, to make them pop, I mean. That's done. Now we'll just put in our, uh, our grass. Now we want a different green than that's what's out here, okay? You don't want the same value there and here. All right, so we'll just change this up. This can be any color. Hello from Italy. G'day from Italy, from Alia, Alina. Alina Alley, how are you, Alina Alley? I hope I can paint one day like you, Ian, mate. I've watched till I'm 58 to learn. Good stuff there, multi chef. All right, where are we? Let's grab, say, this brush here. I, I think I want a. Uh, what brush do I want? I might want. Now I'm just going to grab this paint here. So we'll grab some more water. We'll grab some more of that yellow. And we can highlight this with by adding yellow light to it, cadmium yellow light. Now I'll just see, I think I might have to get a better brush than this. And you want this paint coming into the footpath, but leaving some black. So start from the footpath, leaving some black between this grass. I'm just using a flat on its edge here. Just like that. Pick up some more. If there's any dark bits, you can probably sit a little bit on there, but if there's not, don't worry about it. Now you need it to be dark so it'll pop. And now we're just gonna shape our um, front foreground here with this ground cover, grass, ground cover, whatever it is, whatever it is. leaving a lot of the black in there and you can create hills, crevices, valleys, little gullies, all sorts within this stuff. But we'll just use this one value to fill in all this black. Try not to get any uniform um, impressions happening, any repetitive shapes happening. If you do see them, just go over them simply, take your time, it's your painting. I'll come over here a bit more and um, take your time. Oh no, I can't do it that side. I've got to go this side. I'm right handed. I'll just get off my desktop there. There's palm there. Okay. Just go all over the place. If you've got a great way of creating shadows and pockets of valleys and stuff with this, that's fantastic. Now we're gonna put another color over this, so don't be too worried that it's looking a bit undernourished or looks a bit hollow, okay? 
and we're going to do the same to the other side and see how it looks like it's higher than the footpath. Now I'm going to start from here and it's the footpath is worn out within this stuff. Different brushes give you different effects. You might have a favourite brush. You don't have to use a flat like I'm using here. I'm just using it because it's something I feel will work for the video. Now I want to come to the footpath here and do the same again. Leaving the darks there. If you kill all that dark between this and the footpath, that is going to lose the realistic look of it. here, in front, sink that back. Oh, this is, this is one thing I'm not that keen on doing live, is all this, you've got to wait till it's done. Anyway, I'm sure you people don't mind sitting there watching me paint. Oh, I picked up some yellow there, not to worry, I'll scrub that back. I'll try and look at um, the monitor in a minute and see if there's anything that needs answering. Bear with me a moment. Just remember if you're watching anybody live, doing a live painting or the replay of a live painting, it'll contain a lot of this stuff that just has to get done. It can't be edited out, okay? And everyone you watch, you're supporting them by just giving them the thumbs up and watching them and sharing it onto your Facebook or whatever wherever you like to share it to, you're helping them out. And that's what they do it for. Okay. Don't worry about that big blobby blit. If you were, you can just pick up some of the black, but the black's dry. And you can darken it back. I'll just use some green there. What do we got there from Multi Chef? Everything at the Mo looks like some tossed grenade. Paint factory, lol. Sometimes I've got a orange paint background of my next yesterday, on my neck yesterday. It's relaxing watching you paint, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. T. Rossi, hello again. Now, what in that will clean properly? Now I'm going to get the um, cad yellow light. there. Now this is the sort of painting as well, you can add a beautiful little um, fence in there. Now let's start picking up some of this a lot brighter. And we don't want to do all of it now, we just want to do some of it, okay? Some of it where we feel the lights hitting. Let's see if this is going to come off. So I pretty much want to concentrate on the side of the path. I'm going to go back to this side because it's the side I did first. And leaving some of the... See as I come out, what I'm going to do is come on top of the darker ones. On top of the dark ones. And you just need to periodically put some of this around the place. I'll come bring you over here a bit. Uh, let's get some light hitting up here. And if it's not yellow enough, we can always, which I feel, add some more yellow. There we go. The finer you do these, the better it will look. Now you might be using a reference picture and doing a painting which involves ground cover, grass, trees, shrubs, whatever. Put that subject in your painting, but try adopting this method or creating your own from what I'm showing you here and do it that way. It doesn't have to be, try to look exact the way it does in your reference photo. Bits of this right near the path there, just getting hit by light. The light's pretty much above us, I suppose. How's that looking? I don't like that line there, I'm going to try and break that up 
And if there's anything too like those ones I just put down now, they look a bit thick and blobby. We can get the darker colour. And camouflage it a lot. This turned out not to be a waste of a canvas there. I was a bit worried that what I was going to do with this canvas. But it's turned out okay. How's that side looking? Yeah, we've got some light hitting it. Maybe um, this here could be maybe a bit too high. I might try and get some of that a bit lower under the path there. Looks like it's floating, doesn't it? That's all right. She be right, mate. And we'll come over here. Get some light hitting there, yeah. Oh, I've got a cold coffee flavoured milk there. I just thought of it. I'm dying to have a mouthful of it, eh? You can even put some flowers in there if you want. I'm not going to, but there's just so much you can do with this. How long have I been going for? 50, gee whiz, I tell you what, when you paint and you're having a good time, the time flies, doesn't it, what, eh? All right, what have we got going there? Let me have a look. The stones look a bit weird. <clears throat> okay, we've got a, a lake. Now, see this lake. I don't know if you notice it, but if I, if I put a line from here all the way out straight and another one here, they will point up to the horizon line. That is how you pretty much get a road in your painting looking on the right level. It won't be too high up or too low down. You're getting it pointed to that horizon line. I've done that in my head, but I probably didn't explain it, so I've explained it there. Okay, I might put some fence posts in there later. I don't know, what do we do? That's pretty much it, but I've just shown you how to do some shrubs and trees, and even some green ground cover. All right, let's take the tape off. See how this painting's looking now. Ding a ding a ding. Yeah, I've taped it up because it's just canvas cloth. It's not a canvas panel. Golly. Where the hell is stuff? <laughs> Come on, there we go. I want everyone to remember my paintings are available to buy. I'm just gonna fix that corner up there. Looks a bit dumb. I've left a bit of um, blue out accidentally. I'll try and get some blue that colour. Oh, I could have masked it up, not to worry. Now I'll put an autograph on there, eh? There we go, you can put anything in there, a statue. Oh, the possibilities are endless. Okay. Now I'm gonna use probably a bit of yellow, the um, bright yellow here, just to give myself a um, autograph down here. And we'll whack a frame on it and see how she looks. They always look nice in a frame. Okay, we'll put a signature down here. And like I said, all my paintings are available for sale. 
There's a link in the description below. They're all done through PayPal. Check those links out. Become a member of my art group. Share your art there. Oh, this is a nice, subtle autograph. Nothing too extra. Always put Steve's paw print there. And now we'll whack a frame on it and see how she looks as well, eh? Here we go. Let's come over here a bit. That's not too shabby, is it? Now that's all right. We've got a pretty, it looks kind of real. We've got a good sky. And uh, when we've got some good trees and shrubs, we've got some reflection and a simple foreground. You can put some rickety rackety fence post. Oh, the possibilities in your mind are endless what you can create on canvas, what you can create on a canvas. And just remember, you can do that, okay? Well, come over here. Just so as I can wind everything up. Where's my drink? I'm dying for a mouthful of me drink. Who we got there? Thank you very much. Who is that? Tell T Rose, T Rose Lover. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, check out the links in the description below. So write me a comment if you want to ask me something or anything like that. Um, who we got here? Barry Redburn. For those that don't know, Ian incorporates a cat paw. In he of for his cat Steve. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, a lot of you might know, but at the end of my autograph, there's always a little paw print indicating Steve's touch as well. He's just every now and then he'll pop in some of my videos, little snippets. A lot of you love him. Some people don't like it, but those people that don't like it, you can skip through that part. Okay, he's just part of my channel. My son gave me him as a little kitten, and I couldn't say no, and his love just grew within me for that cat, and it's just a beautiful thing to have. I was never a cat person, uh, but now I just love the damn things. I've got another one named Bernard Watson. He's a champion of a little man. Oh, pardon me. Hope you never heard that. Better out than in. All right. If you like what I'm doing, you make sure you tell your friends. And if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best. Goodbye. Good luck. And bloody good on you, eh? Oh. That had to come out. I was holding it in too long. Just too long. I was holding it in for about the last half an hour. I just had to get it out. Oh, well, what can you do? It's a natural thing. I'll get some of this off there so as I can. That's pretty much all over Red Rover. So I'll get all this off there. Just like that. That way it can dry and I can scrape it off with me blade. Me blade, me blade. All right. And I better say Uru from the Guru.